Hello. Welcome to a Halloween special. I say Halloween special, I'm just going to read you some really, really awesome Halloween facts that I have found and people are saying, Connor, you have not made an effort with this video. It's because I've been busy this week, I go on holiday, I go on holiday tomorrow. So yes, I've been a little bit lazy with this video. I've got a black screen guys, I've made a bit of effort. Come on, cut me some slack here, yeah? Fact number one, did you know that when you went trick or treating back when Halloween first begun, you'd have to dance for your treats? Participants who dressed up would go door to door and perform choreographed songs in exchange for candy. In the early years, trick or treaters were mostly men then followed by little boys who would beg for money. But this was later kind of, well, it was against the law, because it is begging. Fact number two, Halloween is actually more Irish than St. Patrick's Day. Let's dive into that one a bit. Because Halloween's origins came from the Celtic Festival of the Dead, known as Samhain? Samhain? I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm not a Celtic. I'm sorry. <laughs> Celts believed that the dead ghosts, spirits, roam the earth on this day and if you didn't know the Celts were Irish so it makes a lot of sense and they would offer them treats in exchange for safety so the ghouls wouldn't go after them and they'd just have a happy life. They would also wear costumes to frighten away some of the other deadly spirits that haunted their lands which is also where the term of dressing up kind of came into play to scare away all the spirits. St. Patrick's Day was actually invented by an American Irishman. It wasn't founded by actual full 100% Irish blood. So yeah, Halloween was actually thanks to the Irish. So thank you. In the early years though, even back in those days, dressing up didn't mean go to your local shop and buy a cute little costume for your kid. It actually meant wearing the skins of dead animals or even wearing their skulls and body parts. Ugh. Taco lanterns weren't actually pumpkins, or if you're more familiar with them as just pumpkins, they're actually known as jack o lanterns, and we'll dive into why they're called that in just a second. But jack o lanterns were actually originally turnips and potatoes, they were just carved and wedged on a stick. Now, I'm going to be cheeky and I'm going to read this off my phone because this is the cool origin of how Jack-O-Lantern kind of came about. The Jack-O-Lantern comes from the old Irish tale about a man named Stringy Jack. According to folklore, Stringy Jack was out getting sloshed with, with the devil when Jack convinced his drinking partner to turn himself into a coin to pay for the drinks without spending any actual money. Jack then put the devil-shaped coin into his pocket which also contained a silver cross which prevented the devil from changing back. Jack promised to free the devil but only on the condition that the devil left him alone for a whole year. And if Jack died, the devil could not claim his soul. Jack tricked the devil again later on by getting him to pick a piece of fruit out of a tree and then carving a cross into the bark when the devil was in the branches. This trick bought Jack another 10 years of devil free living. When Jack finally died, God decided he wasn't fit for heaven but the devil had promised never to claim his soul for hell. So Jack was sent off to roam earth with only a burning coal for a light. He put the coal into a turnip as a lantern and Stringy Jack became Jack of the Lantern or Jack o' Lantern as known today. Based on this myth, the Irish carve scary faces into turnips, beets, potatoes, and even pumpkins to scare away Stringy Jack and any other spirits of the night. So kids, that's why you carve pumpkins. It's not just fun and games, it's protecting you. Halloween apparently used to be a really good day to find your soulmate. In some parts of Ireland, people celebrated Halloween by playing romantic fortune telling games. Halloween was actually the spooky version of Valentine's Day, essentially. Halloween was originally referred to as Cabbage Night. Cabbage Night is more of a traditional Scottish way of Halloween, like back in the day. So I'm not gonna dive right into that, but if you want to hear more about that, I will happily do a video on that. Some animal shelters refuse to give black cats up for adoption just in case people use them as sacrifices. And this is only around the Halloween time because there are some people that believe in animal slaughter, which is wrong, just wanna put that out there. But some people believe in slaughtering a black cat to 
either summon or repel demons. I don't know how much of that is true, but apparently it's a fact. Moving on, studies have shown that Halloween is making kids more and more evil by the year. The way that this was proven was the fact that costume kids were a lot more brave when their identities were concealed behind the costumes and they were willing to risk anything to steal candy and money from either non-costume kids or costume kids but because their identities were hidden away behind a mask or face paint, it was hard to tell who's who. So, yeah, definitely, kids, don't take other people's sweets. You know, you've got your own. Just knock on somebody's door a bit earlier in the day. They'll give you a bigger amount. There are a lot more deaths surrounding Halloween in regarding food poisoning, hidden objects in foods, etc, etc. This is due to the fact on Halloween there are so many things that people can hide inside the sweets. Some of these things could contain drugs, razor blades or poison. But if you're really that superstitious just don't go trick or treating and just go to the supermarket or the store and buy, buy some sweets for yourself. There you go, they're safe. But don't worry kids, I'm pretty sure there's not razor blades in your candy or anything like that. Anyway, that is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm sorry it seemed a bit more laid back than usual. It feels weird having the black screen up behind me because I like looking around and seeing my wall, but I haven't. I've got a big black screen filling my back wall. So it's a bit different. Hope you enjoyed the kind of different scenery. I don't get how making it black makes it Halloween-y. I'll probably put like little ghost animations or something if I've got time because I've got less than four hours to edit this, which should be fine. But you know, I'm, ed I'm recording this really late at night as well, so cut me some slack with this one. I'm really sorry that this seemed a bit more of a lazy video, but as I said, going away, so I'm really excited. I can't take my camera, so I'm going to have to use my phone just because I've got to travel light. I've only got a, a small bag to take with me as hand luggage, and my camera case just takes up too much room, and I don't want to risk breaking my camera. Paris, here I come. I can't wait, and I can't wait to see any of you guys there. If any of you are in France that watch my videos, come and say hi. Follow me on Snapchat chat, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Leave a like on the video and remember, get carving those pumpkins, kids, because uh, Halloween's going to be a scary one. And also, just be careful and check your sweets before you eat them. Enjoy your Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and have a spooky Halloween. See ya.